Hey guys, Gary J. Today we're going to be playing with some of these uh, fiberglass reflective rods, and that's what this is right here. And uh, it's got reflective tape at the top of it. And uh, going to be making a atlatl dart with this. And you see that's the reflective rod, 72 inches, which is 6 feet long and solid fiberglass. Three dollars and a quarter for that. You may be able to find them cheaper, I don't know. But anyway, uh, these generally make good atlatl darts and they're pretty cheap to, uh, to make. And you can use uh, duct tape for fletching on them and uh, you can just bore out the top of it for a hole for your atlatl spur to, to fit in and I'll show you how to do that and you can bore out the tip of it and put like a field point or whatever point or broadhead in the bottom of it but usually you I would rather have uh, one that's made of ash wood or something that's a little bit heavier and about eight feet long I mean seven feet long instead of six feet long uh, when it comes to uh, using broadheads and stuff so we'll see how it goes, guys. Okay, guys, we, we have our atlatl here. And what I wanted to show you is I'm going to be using this fiberglass rod. It costs $3 and a quarter. These look like brand new, though. So these are 6 foot long, 72 inches. Uh, they got no fletching on them because I'm going to turn it into a dart for the atlatl. It's got no point on it. So... Uh, that's a problem when you throw anything. It's like taking an arrow front for, for, for a bow and trying to shoot that with no point and no fletching. So, again, no fletching. The only thing I've done on this, of course, is to uh, put a uh, a hole on the uh, end of the rod itself. I use the Dremel tool to do that with, which looks pretty good. And uh, this right here is your spur, and that hole goes into the spur right here. And it looks like this right here when you're through with it, okay? So what I want to do is show you what happens when you throw a dart or even shoot an arrow that doesn't have fletching and doesn't have a point. Uh, one of the things that uh, come into play is that uh, if this is six foot long, three foot would be the center point of, of this uh, dart. Well, you need to have a front of center. If this is center, you need a front of center farther up. That would be the weight of the point to help stabilize the front. And your fletching on the rear is going to stabilize the rear of your dart, just like it will for an arrow that goes to a bow. Okay, so you gotta have both. So, let's throw this six foot dart and see how it flies with no fletching, no front of center uh, point on it to shift that weight. Okay, sorry about that. Let's kinda of zoom it in a little bit. Maybe you can see it better. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna throw this one real far. I'm gonna throw it like 25 yards. It should throw better than it would if it were uh, throwing it, you know, long distance. Okay, it, say 25 yards. Watch how it flies. One, two, three. Now what happened with that one is that, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, what happened with that one is that uh, it went, this camera, it went out nicely and then it porpoised, what we call porpoise, it went straight down. It didn't have the fletching to keep it level and it certainly didn't have any weight to it. 
So it just went out and then boom, straight down. Uh, so that shows you what fletching in a point can do. And that's like, uh, that's about 23, 24 yards. And so we'll throw it farther this next time. Okay, we've got our atlatl back. And uh, we're going to throw it. Uh, I'm going to throw it about 45 yards. You'll be able to see more of what's going on. So we can magnify it. Maybe you can see it better. Uh, it has really no stability and, and it's out of control. Okay, right? One, two, three. Now, on that one, maybe you saw that. Uh, let me reduce that screen. Maybe you saw that one. It went out and it turned sideways and went sideways like that. Okay. Now, if it had weight to the point of it, it would not have done that. It would have straightened up. And then the fletching on the back would stabilize it. So it would go straight on out. So that's what happens when you don't have fletching and you don't have front of center with a point. So now the job is to put the fletching on. And I'm going to, uh, before I put the real fletching on, like with the real feathers, I'm going to use duct tape. And uh, I'm going to make a point for that. Okay, guys, we've got our fletching on here on our dart and we've got a point and I put some uh, artificial sinew on the end right here just try to help that point out a little bit so let's see how she throws she looks pretty good See how she looks. Well, we're gonna throw her like 45 yards, maybe, and see how this fletching and this point works. The uh, front of center is not quite far enough for me. That's a 125 grain field head point on that. So let's see how she does. One, two, three. Okay, do it toward that tree, and let's see what tree is that. It's the one, I can't see my finger right here. Hit that tree right there, and that, that's about uh, 10, 20. 25, 25, 30 yards at the most. But she flew pretty good. The wind is blowing really bad right now. The wind's blowing up to 15 miles an hour. Okay, guys. I'm going to show you how I deal with this um, fiberglass rod in order to make it into a fiberglass dart for an atlatl. Uh, very simple. On the end right here, you got this tip right here. Now, I will use this tip right here, uh, but I'll cut off the top part of it right here. Just the very top part of it right here, and we'll glue it back on after I've made the uh, cut out here. And uh, that will be for the uh, atlatl spur to go in so 
This will be the back of the arrow and the fletching will go here. In order to uh, bore out this piece right here, uh, this is what I'll be using. And this is just uh, kind of like uh, a grinding stone here and you see kind of the shape of it. It's getting kind of worn and uh, a Dremel tube. And uh, this will make short work of it. I tried different tools and stuff like that on the Dremel and uh, ended up just wasting time because actually the fiberglass is, is not that tough uh, for this grinding tool right here. And so what we're going to do is, hopefully that's in focus, is just turn this on and grind it right through the center, okay? All right, ready? You probably want to wear a mask and maybe glasses too, protect your eyes. You can manipulate this grinding tool a lot too, because sometimes your hole may not be perfectly round the way you want to, but just pull it out and look at it and make sure that you're, that you are centering. And it doesn't have to be quite perfect either. But uh, this edge right here is a little thin. But uh, maybe you can see that. Uh, So that hole, it doesn't have to be a big, uh, you know, deep hole or anything like that for uh, these uh, uh, fiberglass rods or anything like that. But that's kind of about the thickness you want right up here at the top. And uh, you make that kind of round. And if you ever have a problem, you can just cut that off real easy too. So that's the back end part right there. And then... You see how quick that was. And then this part right here, uh, we'll cut this off right here. Now these right here are very fragile, but they will cut through metal and steel. They're amazing how well they will cut. So fiberglass is no real problem for it. So, and so we're going to cut it across here. Make sure you got this supported well. And this is some green tape for our fletching and some orange tape for our fletching. And try to cut this as even as you can. What did that take? 10 seconds. So you see how easy that is to cut. And uh, now take this 
this out. I'm going to put back this bit here. That's the one that's, that's uh, kind of a gr grinding stone. Okay. You can kind of center this up. So. That bit just slipping, which that's not a problem. This end doesn't have to be cut out so much uh, as long as you can get uh, your fill point in. In this case, we'll be using fill point. So, that's a rough one. And we'll use hot stick glue. So, the hole that I have in here now... Uh, Let's see. Let touch it up just a little bit. Knock some of that stuff out of the way. You see how that looks there? What we have to do now, that'll hold the uh, part of that fill point but what we have to do now is uh go deeper inside here and you could mark that if you want to with a, a marker so i have another bit here i know that will suffice okay this is another stone type bit right here it really is about the right size that I need for for what I'm doing. Okay, it's getting hot. You see how it's looking there. We need to go just a tad more. That's it right there. That's what we want. Yeah, that that's getting hot right there too. I'm looking into the center of that, trying to make sure that it's uh, perfectly round. Okay, I've turned this rod up vertical to try to get any of this fiberglass powder out of here. And I'm going to take a wet Q-tip. You can see that pink coming out. Well, orange. And I have another wet Q-tip here. Just 
still see it. Look at that powder coming out. You want to make sure you get all this powder out that you can because you, that glue, you don't want it against the powder. It's kind of like, kind of like uh, baby powder. And here's a, one more wet one here. So, okay, so that's all we're doing is making sure that's clean, okay? Now, we get ready to hot glue this. Okay, this is what we use, ferrotite stick hot glue. And this is our fill point, 125 grain. And we just heat up this glue. Let's try a different lighter here. The other lighter just wasn't doing it. Make sure you don't get your hand underneath this hot glue because it will, it will mess you up. Put a good bit on here, all along this shaft right here. It doesn't matter how that looks right now because you're going to be melting this right here, okay? So, and it hardens within 10 to 15 seconds probably. See, right, right now it's hardened already. Okay, I think we got enough glue here. If we can get it to melt evenly here, I'm just going to kind of roll it. Well, it's a liquid state. Okay. So you got to kind of force it in there a little bit. And that's what she'll look like when you've got it in there, okay? There's not a lot of room on the inside for that shaft, but there's enough for that glue that I put on the thread to push up and hold it. So it is secure now so that's how you do your point and uh, so the points there the back end of the shaft is is cut and now uh, you got to do your um, fletching right and uh, we use this uh, orange tape right here cut it square first Okay, I measured this with a bow square right here, and I know that that's my length right there. Six inches. And you take your tape, and like where my thumb is here and here, you pull it out and then roll it. You gotta carefully roll it. And you wanna leave about eighth of an inch like that so you this part right here is a sticky part right so so on the back end of your dart you take the sticky part right here and just line it up to kind of in the center. In this case, and just push down on it. And you can move it. And this will be like uh, your 12 o'clock vein right here. 
and then you put one at four o'clock and one at eight o'clock. Now some people only use two veins. They'll put a flat one here and then a flat one right here, and that's all they're going to use. Okay, so you do that one, and uh, when I get through putting them on, I will glue this. I use Gorilla Glue or Super Glue or something like that, and I'll run a bead of glue all the way down here, and I'll run a bead of glue on the other side too, uh, just to, to make sure that that's supported. And so it looks square right now, and then what you'll end up doing uh, to give it some shape, set it up straight like that. You take your pair of scissors right here, and you can mark it how far you need to be back, like two, like one and seven eighths. Usually works for good for me. And see, that's how it'll look when you finish the fletching on it. And so you got your hole back here for your spur. Okay. And you got your point on there. So when you finish, okay, when you're done, this is the way it should look right here. And I oh know it's hard to get down to focus, but this tip right here, uh, remember this is uh, that end that was on there. I just cut the very top of it out. And to me, that kind of lends a little bit more support for going into the spur of the atlatl itself. So, and remember the fletching here does not cause the dart to spin because it's six feet long. It just, it may spin just a little bit in flight, but that's about it but it just stabilizes the dart so that it will act like a parachute on the back of the dart. And if you've got the point heavy enough, you have a front of center, which is beyond the center point of the whole shaft, which makes it go kind of straight too. And this kind of uh, acts like a parachute to uh, stabilize the dart in, in the air. And these darts, they, 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 uh, wobble a lot and that's what makes them accurate so these fiberglass darts will wobble a good bit and that makes them really uh more stable too and more accurate well i hope this helps you uh if you're going to make some of these darts they're cheap to make and uh like with the, this tip right here remember i i just took a knife and just cut off the edge of this rubber piece this rubber piece right here and then uh, glued the sh put glue on the shaft and then slid it back over there so that's why it looks like that so on the side view and then you can take like uh, a marker like one of these here sharpies and and make you some circles on it and whatever make it your own and uh, <clears throat> so it it works real well. Sometimes if you buy a shaft that's already made, you may spend um, uh, $12, $15 a shaft or $20 a shaft for one that's already made. And this is a pretty cheap, easy way to make them. And they throw really well. I've thrown probably 100 times already with these shafts, and they throw real well. They really do. And just as good as ash to me and... A lot of people do use fiberglass rods like this too, so um, you might want to try it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Gary J. Hey guys, just want to show you these fiberglass darts that I made. Uh, I made a, a stand. I had my brother make this stand welded. He's got a welding machine shop. We used to work the same place way, 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 way back. But uh, this right here, just around a piece of metal right here, holds the darts in here and my atlatl here. And uh, if I'm shooting my bow and arrow, uh, I can use that too. Down here, see right there, you can stick it in the ground and then 
uh, step on it right here and push it down and that way it's stable it's not going to fall so easy way to keep up with uh, your darts and your bow and atlatl and other stuff too so we're going to be throwing this bale over here and see how that goes with our new fiberglass darts they seem to throw really good well guys we're getting into low light situation here so let's see if we can get that moose elk caribou woolly mammoth and our targets three and a half inches by two and a half inches which looks a whole lot smaller from here let's go one two three Ooh. Mm. Ooh. you don't believe that i think that dead i think i hit that thing maybe dead center that was a great shot right there guys a lot of luck in that too, right? Let me not. Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh. Now that was another good shot right there, guys. Okay, guys. One, two, three. Ooh. We're trying to hit that target again. Yeah. 